Hello, I'm Carrie Hennessy, and welcome to The Dirt. Gardens and landscapes follow what is fashionable, just like clothing trends. Used along a foundation were once considered the height of yard sophistication, much like shoulder pads in the 80s. In the last decade, the use of native plants in the landscape has become the hottest topic among experts and homeowners alike. Today's episode is an introduction to making your yard very fashionable, naturally. First, let's answer the obvious question, what is a native plant? A plant is considered to be native or indigenous to a region if it was already growing before European settlers arrived. For Wisconsin, that means anything that was already growing here before the 1820s. The next question to answer is, so what's the big deal about native plants? Native plants have spent thousands of years adapting to our specific climate, soils, and weather patterns. They fit perfectly with another hot garden fashion of the last decade, sustainability. The basic principle of sustainability is that our very survival depends on our natural environment, whether it's how we control pollution or the choices we make when planting something in our yards. Native plants evolved with native insects, birds, and mammals. So it makes sense that in order to maintain and sustain our natural ecosystems and animal populations, native plants play a vital role in providing food and shelter. One of the most recognizable examples of this native evolution is the monarch butterfly. Everyone learns in grade school about the life cycle of the monarch butterfly from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to adult. And we learn that monarch caterpillars only eat the leaves of the milkweed plant. Adults can find nourishment from a variety of nectar sources, but the caterpillars cannot live without milkweed plants. There's over 70 species of the milkweed genus Asclepius that are native to the United States alone, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. The monarch butterfly is the only butterfly that migrates the way birds do, spending winters in Mexico and then traveling north again in spring. Different species of milkweed need to exist that can survive in different climates and habitats across the country to sustain the populations along their migration route every year. In Wisconsin, there are more than 10 species of native milkweeds. We carry two of these at Johnson's Nursery, Asclepius tuberosa, also known as butterfly weed, and Asclepius incarnata, red milkweed. Both will sustain the monarch caterpillar, but they evolved in very different locations. Red milkweeds prefer a location that is sunny and tends to hold water, while the orange butterfly weed loves a location that is hot and dry. Native plants also have a genetic advantage for surviving our hot, humid summers punctuated by drought and frigid winters. Compass plant is a good example of a native that is well equipped for a hot, dry summer. Compass plant evolved on the wide open prairies where water conservation is important. Its deep taproot helps it find water underground and the leaves orientate themselves in a north-south facing direction to avoid the direct angle of the sun. Early settlers used this plant to give them a sense of direction on their travels, which is how it earned the common name of compass plant. If you place your hands on the wide flat leaves, you can actually feel that it's cooler than the surrounding air. Putting plants like this in your yard means you won't have to water as much and you save money. So you'd think that native plants would be an easy sell, right? Well, a common misconception about natives is that they don't require any maintenance in your yard, that perennials don't ever need to be divided or cut back, that trees and shrubs don't need to be pruned or monitored for pests. So what ends up happening is that little native garden in the corner of your yard becomes a wild looking beast and the neighbors think you are crazy. Just because a plant is native doesn't mean that it always has a place in your yard. Cut plant is a fantastic tall perennial that attracts butterflies to its yellow flowers and birds to its seeds in fall. But it will get over six feet tall and seeds itself readily about the garden. So it might not be the best choice if you have a small city lot or don't like weeding. Starting with native plants in containers and larger bald and burlap sizes will reduce your maintenance requirements. It's easier for them to compete with weeds and you can apply a pre-emergent herbicide like preen or an organic option made from corn gluten to keep weed seeds from germinating. Plus, if you start with larger sizes, it is easier for the neighbors to understand your vision. The concept of using native plants in the landscape has been around for nearly a hundred years. It is only now as we lose more and more natural habitat that we realize the true importance of adding them to our gardens. Now I'm not saying that everyone should go completely native and get rid of anything in their yard that isn't, though many people have gone with this option. Think of your yard as a closet. 
Yes, it is fun to have the newest trends from overseas, but you also want those basics you can wear into the following seasons. Build your yard around those fashionable staples, native plants. They are classic and will never go out of style. I'm Carrie Hennessy. Thanks for watching The Dirt.